Hello, calculus students and general seekers of truth. Welcome to the continuing series of video on applications of parametric equations. And in this video, we are going to wrap up the cliffhanger from the previous video that talks about how to find arc length in parametric mode. So keep in mind that let's say we have some arc length or some graph here that looks maybe something like this. And we want to know what is the distance traveled along this arc right here. Let me highlight it here. It's what is the distance traveled along this arc right here? Okay. From the start here to the end. All right, this that curve. Now what makes this problem a little bit more difficult is that this curve here is not a function at least not in terms of x and y it's actually the combination of two functions where x is equal to you know this is x of t and you know y of t right this is this curve here is made up of two parametric equations so we're going to start out with the arc length formula for when we have uh x and y as a function of each other. So this is the formula that we're familiar with in terms of x and y. The arc length is equal to the square root of the derivative of the function. And we take the integral of all that over some interval. So let's say like a and b, okay, where a and b is some point on the x axis. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to work with just using a bunch of algebra to somehow incorporate t into this because that's what was really useful to us when we're working in um, parametric mode. But we know, so we know already that dy dx is equal to dy dt over dx dt. So I'm going to take this result and substitute it in for dy dx. So I get the same thing, but instead of dy dx squared, it's going to be dy dt squared over dx dt squared. Because I'm taking dy dt over dx dt and substituting in here and then square it. So then this is what I would get. Now, um, just to keep on going, I, I want to represent this in some way that I can do a complete an integral of it um, in parametric mode. So now I'm going to factor out 1 over dx dt quantity squared. In other words, I'm going to factor out this denominator here. So if I factor, and this is kind of a weird way to factor things, but if I factor 1 over dx over dt quantity squared out of this 1, then what I'm left with is dx dt squared. Okay. Because if I were to distribute, if I take this and distribute it through, then you know some, there was some, become some cancellation there and we get an, with the 1. For this term, if we pull out this denominator, then all we're left with here is the numerator. And there's that. Now, keeping with um, you know the work that we've been doing, when we have a square root of a squared, it's nice to pull that out of the square root. So I'm going to take this term right here and take it out of the square root entirely. So instead of 1 over dx dt squared, um, the square root of the squared is just the term itself. Let me get it out here. And at this point, um, I apply a little bit of another algebra trick. Um, 1 over dx dt is really uh, the reciprocal of dx dt, which is dt dx. Okay. And we still have the uh, multiply by dx here. So this term and this is going to cancel, and what I end up in my in the final uh, representation of arc length here is the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared okay, dt, and instead of integrating between a and b. Before a and b are x values, 
now we're integrating with respect to t so we have to integrate you know this would be like t1 t2 where t1 and t2 are two given moments of time okay. so now um, what we've done here is found a, a, an equivalent formula for finding arc length but instead of depending this on the x values we're going to you know, depend on the t values or time in order to find this arc length here. Okay? And you can see that this hopefully looks a little bit familiar to you. Um, this part right here, the integrand here, is really the formula for distance traveled. Uh, excuse me, not distance traveled, but speed. Okay? So this right here is really an expression for speed. And then dt is an expression for time. So if you take speed multiplied by time, then you get um, a tiny little distance. And the integral says we're going to add up all of those little distances. Okay. And so again, this is not a strict proof. There's, I did a little bit of algebraic tricks here. But I assure you that this is all valid and it, and it works. And there is a um, good meaning to all of this. Um, Hopefully, it gives you a good intuition uh, of how to find the uh, the arc length in parametric mode. This is also hopefully familiar to you if you look at the distance formula that you've been accustomed to in geometry, algebra 2, and so on, where it's really change in x squared plus change in y squared, all, of the, all with the square root. Calculus just adds an extra technique to it of taking an infinite sum of it all. Now, with all this completed, we can now return to looking at example 2, part E. So part E says, how far did the, tr the uh, object travel on the time interval 0 to 4? So using, an, a, an and again, we agree that this is really just a, a meaning of arc length. Like, what's the length of that arc from the time the particle started moving to the time it's, uh, time is equal to 4? So this is the integral from 0 to 4 of the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. Okay. Now dx dt is the derivative of the position of x which is the horizontal component of the velocity. dy dt is the derivative of the position function of y. So that is just the vertical component of the velocity vector. So now all we need to do is take this, ve this uh, velocity vector, substitute it into here, and then evaluate that integral. So I've taken the velocity vector, substituted into the formula for arc length, and now we value it on a calculator. And I get 6.097. Okay. Now um, I want to give you a quick pointer uh, into how to use your calculator effectively here, uh, because it is quite a mess to type this into all one expression. So on your calculator, what I recommend you do is go to y1, go to the, the, the y equals, uh, turn off the first two here, which is the position function. And what I've done here is I've typed in um, the parametric equation for the velocity function, which is that expression. Okay. And then we are going to use the math button, go down to f int. So this is integration. And if you have one of the new calculators, this will be really nice and easy for you. But if you're like me, this is still uh, very much uh, doable. So we want the square root. And it's really the square root of this x function here that we typed in into y1 before. So let's take advantage of your calculator. Hit the vars button. Go over to y vars. Go down to parametric. And this was x2 squared plus vars y vars, go down to parametric, y2, and square it, close the square root, 
The next argument you have to type in here is the variable so that the calculator knows what it's integrating with. So this is like dt and then the lower bound which is 0 and the upper bound which is 4. And then close everything, hit enter and let your calculator go to work. And when you're done, you get this expression 6.097. So now we've have um, you know started a little bit of review of vectors and we've gone all the way through an example with the particle motion in two dimensional space. Uh, I am going to continue another video that gives you an example of how to solve some slightly more complicated problems. If you're able to solve them by yourself, feel free to do it. If you find yourself struggling, come back in here and take a look at the next set of examples.